like, oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's important, important, important news. So good morning, everybody. I am Pat Nauer. I am a business strategist, and I am here this morning with my co-host, Barbara Ellison, and our wonderful guest, Steve Zapato. I am so excited to have you here today, Steve. Oh, my gosh. You're going to rock the worlds of so many people. So if you're watching this live, of course, you're going to, you're going to, catch up with us. But if you're watching this on replay, make sure to write to type in hashtag replay. So we know that you are watching. Um, like I said, this is going to be a rock your world kind of show today. Um, I'm so excited. But um, my name again, my name is I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my name I've, I've enjoyed I the pre show. It's been <laughs> I know. I, I just want you, I'm gonna interrupt Pat. I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. I do stuff like this on, on people's podcasts. And one lady actually stopped me in the middle of a podcast. She said, you have to quit doing that. You're distracting me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, 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 you know, we should all be this distracted in such a wonderful way. Let's face it. So yeah. uh, anyway, so um, just to introduce myself, if you don't know me, my name is Pat Nauer. I'm a business strategist and I've been featured um, in magazines on Fox News. I have three books in publication and I've been working with business owners for over 18 years to help them solve the biggest problems in their business. Um, I love, love, love what I do. And I get to interact with wonderful people like Steve and with my co-host, Barbara Ellison. Hey, Barb, how are you? How are you this morning? Oh, hey, I am just excited to be here. I, I, as I said, I loved the pre-show, um, you know, and learned a couple of tips already. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, but anyways, I'm Barbara Lunan Ellison, and I am your personality pro because personality drives reality. It affects everything. And, you know, for myself, I'm on a mission to make happiness the norm rather than the exception. And the thing is about happiness you cannot it's part of that is building a successful business and you can't have impact or influence or earn income if you don't have good communication skills so that's what i do i work with heart-centered entrepreneurs to just transfer you know to transform their business messaging and to learn the personality of their messaging so that they can attract their absolutely ideal audience and that's and it, you know and that's that's not only about audiences but that's children and husbands and coworkers and so it is just a blast i love doing it and you know and that's why coming on onto this show we're bringing people on that are helping you to build your business your movement your tribe whatever you're calling it so i'm just excited to be here and love the pre-show so i can't wait to hear what's rest the rest well, we're going to be boring on the rest. You got the good part. We're just going to settle. In. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know Steve, the very boring Steve, is that Steve teaches speakers how to speak and helps them to get speaking gigs. Right, Steve? That's absolutely right. Yeah, I run. I've been speaking for 40 years. I'm a, I call myself Steve Zapato, the most famous unfamous speaker in America. And one of the reasons for that is because if you speak in corporate America, nobody knows who you are. We're not the Tony Robbins out in the front of everybody. We're not, uh, you know, those other guys who are always out in front, you know, on the, on the side where everybody sees you. We're in the back. We're teaching corporations how to run better meetings. Uh, one of my new courses right now is uh, stop boring speakers, stop boring meetings because we got a new term out there called uh, uh, Zoom fatigue. And I tell people all the time, there's no Zoom fatigue, right? Because we've been Zooming and Facebooking for a long time. What it is is boring speaker fatigue. And if we can teach people how to interact well on the small screen, boy, it's going to change your company, change your organization. And that's what it's all about. You, uh, It's interesting, though, Barb, you mentioned a couple things that I jotted down uh, some notes. But you said good communication skills. And my newest book, which should be out in a couple months, is called Shut Up and Succeed. Oh, and uh, yeah, yes. obviously about some communication and how you don't always have to be talking, how to ask the right questions at the right time, that yeah. kind of stuff. And I also run two podcasts, the Speaker Talks podcast, oh. um, which is for speakers, authors and entrepreneurs and leaders, of course. And then I also have the happiness agenda. Yeah. Um, yeah so it's uh, it's a one where I just get people who uh, semi well known, you know, a couple yes. of the I, like when I first started five years ago, I got uh I don't want to say Christy Brinkley because I wasn't who it was, but one of the supermodels who uh, mm. uh, came on and shared how she got into that and how she went to this height and it wasn't making her happy. So she had to right. go back to here and now she's found her niche. So it's right. the happiness agenda so that people can, like you say, right. enjoy what they do. Right. I, I, I tell people all the time, I've had 36 different full-time jobs, 36 people go, that's mm -hmm. not possible. I go, 
sometimes two and three full-time jobs and you have to have held them six months or you can't mm -hmm. count them. And right. people say, why? I go, because I get bored easily <laughs> and, and I get exactly. unhappy easily. So mm -hmm. why not, if this is not making me happy or not fulfilling me, yep, I'm making enough mm -hmm. money. I'll keep this job for the money, but then I'll go do that for fuck. Right. Yeah. Yes, right. Exactly. That's like, that's like one of the things for me, I've always had two or three jobs going, you know, like mm -hmm. a, to have variety. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Life yeah. is too short. To, and plus for me, it's experimentation. Oh. Just experiment with what you want to do. And if you don't find it, go on to the next thing and That's go on to the next right. thing and go on to the next thing until you find the thing that lights your, your like, like lights your fire. Yeah. That gives, well, I, that, uh, gives one you, of the things, that gives you passion. Yeah. I owned a sporting goods store way back when in my life, you know, mm -hmm. I've had like 10 different lives and uh, in that sporting <laughs> goods store, you'd always go out to Las Vegas to buying trips. And I love to, mm -hmm. I learned how to play craps and that kind of stuff. And then one mm -hmm. year uh, riverboat gambling came to Iowa, Illinois, and probably many other states. Mm -hmm. But I was like, boy, how do I not, lose my shorts by going gambling right and so then i saw an ad that said hey become a dealer and i went what oh. and so yeah i had to spend three months of my own time that you did it for free but mm -hmm. you went and learned to be i learned to be a craps dealer and so i dealt craps on the riverboat casino for a whole year as it cruised up and down the mist i say hey i was a riverboat gambler for a while right How and fun. it was fun and when exactly. it stopped being fun because you know they all have rules. They all have regulations. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. tell by now that I'm not a corporate guy. I, <laughs> I don't follow the rules, you know? Right. And so they would say, you got to do this, Steve. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. And I was yeah. the oldest one by mm -hmm. far on this riverboat. It, I think I was 50 at the time, but I was by far because the others are young kids wanting to do this, wanting to do that. And so, you know, when they'd have different things, I'd go, uh, nope, not me. And, and I didn't make friends with the bosses, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like, they at one point came up to our uh, craps table and they said, we need somebody to volunteer to teach. And the way they put it was to teach little old ladies how to play the game. So when they come on board, they can have a great time. And I went, pick me. Right. And they, and honest, they looked right. at me and went, not you, Sapato, not you. And they picked one of the most boring dealers we had to work oh, with. Who what? knows why, but yeah. they didn't, you know, I, I said, boy, with my personality, working with these ladies, teaching them, having a good time, boy, they'll love the game. And mm -hmm. then they were like, because mm -hmm. they didn't like me, they went, no. Yeah, you're like okay. <laughs> Not like for a, for a lot of years, I was a bartender, and oh. bartenders and bartenders are the lowest paid psychologists around. But mm -hmm. I always That's had right. fun with it. I always had fun with it. Okay, let's sing. You know, something a good song would come on the jukebox. Hey, let's sing, and I would have the whole bar singing. You know, that <laughs> I owned. One of the things I owned was a nightclub banquet hall. Oh. It was called the Boulevard out of Moline, Illinois. And like you say, we had karaoke, we had right. this, we had that, but it was, it was all about fun. It was having right. a great time. And that was what some people don't understand. It, did I make any money at that bar? Not a dime. No, no, no. No. <laughs> so I had it for five years, but you know, it's time to move on when it's time to move on. But right. it was, it, it is funny that you say as a bartender, you're the lowest paid psychologist, psychologist. right? And that's what it is. People come in and want to tell you their sorrows. I remember one of the things I remember is 2008 hit. And the economy dropped, you know, right. all the real estate dropped. Oh, and I had yeah. people coming into the bar sitting in front of me going, Steve, man, the world is terrible. I went, wait a minute. Don't you work at this company? And he went, well, yeah, I went. And you've, you know, I'm there. You're upper management at that company. They went, yeah. I went, so did you get a cut in your pay? They went, no. I went, did you get your hours cut? They went, no. I went, okay, so you're making exactly the same money you were before. You're doing this, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. They went, yeah. I said, so why is the economy so bad? <laughs> and they were like, well, it just is. <laughs> you're like, right, exactly. your life hasn't changed at all. Right. I've right. had that same conversation over and over. It feels like Groundhog Day over the past oh. year. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I have this conversation, I would say, at least twice a week, even now with with people about how awful the economy is when they're in jobs when their businesses are doing fine i mean i even have one client who the other day said to me the economy is so awful you know i'm really really struggling she did 300 percent increase in the past year oh <laughs> The economy is so awful, right? Because they're listening to the they're listening to the powers of be. Exactly right. One of the greatest challenges we have with everything we do is that we listen to people who only want to drag us down. I call it. There's balcony. I do a whole course on 
balcony people and basement people. Right, Ooh, which is all about I people who that. raise you up and people who drag you down. And then yeah. there's an in-between section, which my mother was part of, which is people who think they're balcony people, but are really basement people. They're the ones who say, why are you doing that? You can't yeah. do that. Why are you risking right. that? You shouldn't try that. And you're like, really? Really? And mm -hmm. so there's lots of stuff out there that if we listen to the news, especially like my wife and I shut off the news about four years ago, right? Mm -hmm. We said the news is nothing but bad news. And you know what? Here's the yeah. truth, right? If it's bad enough, somebody on Facebook will share it. Will share it with me. That's, That's how very I feel. true. <laughs> That's, That's very how I true. Feel. That's right. Or when you get and into the search engine, it's right there staring oh, you right in the face there, all the time. It'll, and that's it'll it. Pop you almost find my news. That's right. You have yeah. to keep pushing it aside because everybody wants to tell you all the bad news. You know, when you meet people, you're just like, "Hey, how's your day?" You know, and I always I greet people with, "You know, my day's fantastic. If it was any better, it would take two of me to hold it all in." Right? <laughs> and <laughs> and so many other better, people I'd are like, twin. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. And that's, you know, so when you talk to other people, they're like, oh, it's OK. Uh, or what is it? Uh, Zig Ziglar used to have a, a thing. I think it was Zig Ziglar, but it was, uh, well, I'm good under the circumstances. And he would say, well, what are you doing under there? <laughs> <laughs> well, before the show started, Steve and I were actually talking about Zig Ziglar and we were talking about going to a seminar and how. Um, you know, sometimes, so I, I was sharing with him that I'm going to be, uh, I'm leading, I'm hosting um, an Ilatina leadership experience, a one day, um, basically a one day um, leadership course. It's going to have many different speakers and that as part of it, you know, we're, we're going to be probably doing a mastermind the next day. And I was talking to Steve about it saying, you know, what do you think? You know, and we were talking about the good experiences, the good seminars versus mm -hmm. the bad seminars and how the bad ones will bring you in and give you very little value. And where we came up with Zig Ziglar was that Steve, you were talking about how you were given the option to get lunch with Zig Ziglar and what happened? Well, it was, you know, you pay so much like $500 in those days to go see Zig Ziglar. And then they said for, hey, for $200 extra, you can have breakfast with Zig Ziglar, right? On that mm -hmm. second day. And I went, oh, we're going. I paid $200 Where, for my wife and I to go. And it turned out there were 150 people who went to that breakfast. So there was nothing personal, nothing, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, seriously, this, <laughs> we're sharing breakfast with Zig Ziglar. No, we're not. You can't even see him mm -hmm. down the other end of the table. What a shame. When you when you go to a workshop, um, so many people spend the first 30 minutes telling their story. Hey, you know, when I was uh, young, I struggled and my my family struggled and I was so poor. And then I did this and that. Ooh, nobody cares. Nobody right. Cares. If you tell me you're going to teach me something, please teach me something. Help right. me grow my business. And so many people are so wrapped up in trying to do the storytelling. I offer a signature course called Story Tizing. Now, the difference is when you think of storytelling, you think of putting your grandchildren or your children to bed. You think of people sitting back, relaxing, mm -hmm. going, hey, tell me a story. And so many people are so boring at that, that that's why I invented story tizing. It's the real mm -hmm. method you use to connect with your audience. And if you aren't telling your stories using the story tizing platform, you're probably boring a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that, too, that, you know, the reason that so, so many of us came from corporate America. I mean, pretty mm -hmm. much everybody yeah. came from, from a corporate environment. And yeah. in a corporate environment, the way that you speak is typically very different than when you're out there doing it on Facebook, whether um, doing it on LinkedIn, doing it on, yeah. you know, summits, right? So it's a whole different way of speaking that has to be, you have to create for yourself. That's Can right. you well, talk and that's a little bit about that too? Yeah, one of, the, one of the giant challenges, uh, I think we mentioned it here already, is Zoom fatigue. And people right. talk about that. And that's because people are boring. How many times have you gone, in, if you're in a corporate America, have you gone to a meeting and just been bored to death? You're like, oh, my gosh, this is so horrible. And, and heaven, my help, if, and yeah. heaven <laughs> help if it's at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, oh. you're like. Oh, yeah, right after lunch. Oh, it, it, after but it almost lunch? doesn't matter because. Here's what I know. If you've gone to some of these uh, uh, networking, you know, where there's 15, 20 people on a networking mm -hmm. event and, and they give you a minute to, to tell your elevator pitch, which I'm, yeah. by the way, it should be called an opportunity talk because right. I, I, I also will show you how to do that. But if you're, if you listen to these people, I always ask the question, if those people can bore me in a minute, 
What right. do you think their talks are like, right? Because you do, they bore you in a minute. It's like, exactly. I think I just drifted off while you were trying to tell me about your business and you. And mm -hmm. you know what? We don't care about you. We care about what you can do for us. I hope right. that's why you came. What can we, the three of us here, do to help you grow your business, grow your attitude, right. change your life, make things better? Isn't that why we're here? Exactly. exactly why we're here exactly yeah. and well, that's gonna, why I'm this is jump. called everyday riches yeah, yeah. everyday and, riches and i'm going to jump back in because when she said what's you know why why is there boring meetings it's because people don't know how to engage their audience whether you're talking to one or you're talking to 30. and i love it i've had people over the years tell me steve you don't understand all my material is boring and i go no you your material are. is dry you are boring Ooh. Oh, and it's true. It's true. Yeah. All it takes is some involvement, some energy, some, mm -hmm. and you ask questions, get them Have involved. Some fun. Put some Absolutely. fun in Absolutely. Have some fun. And it doesn't matter. Uh, I will agree with Pat. It used to be when you were doing corporate America, you had to do a certain way. Now I believe corporate America has changed enough that they mm -hmm. want somebody who can really engage. You don't have to be entertaining. You don't have to tell jokes mm -hmm. and tell stories and song and dance, but you That's have to be engaging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have yeah. to be engaged. You have yeah, you do. And that's what, and be that's what I started. Oh, and be absolutely authentic. that. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to you're going to find out. Uh, I always so I remember how many years ago somebody said, you know, Steve, not everybody likes you. And I was like, well, how can that, how can that be? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I realize I'm an acquired taste to many people. And, you know, my kind of enthusiasm, my kind of sarcasm, my kind of jokes. Mm -hmm just don't always roll with some people, you know, they're like, they want to be here and, and I'm way out there. And so they're like, well, you know, when, when I go on, like I'm doing a, a big event in uh, Las Vegas in June in person Ooh. event. And, you know, you have to, you're going to have, they said they're going to be 250 people sitting in that audience. When you got 250 people sitting in front of you, you can't go, okay. And then look up at our PowerPoint. The next thing we have up, no, they don't mm -hmm. want that. They could read that off of a PowerPoint presentation you sent home with them. Right. They want you to be authentic with them and help them grow. That's it. Right, Barbara? Yeah, exactly. No more death by PowerPoint. Mm -mm. Yeah. Death by PowerPoint right. is yet to go. Absolutely. Mm. So, Steve, exactly. give us one or two tips for being um, energetic and, um, and engaging in a presentation. Well, I think that the... Uh, Barb had it right. You have to be authentic. Uh, but one of the problems, I was working with somebody last year and their authentic self was boring. Right. I mean, right. sorry, but they were used to doing this. And so you have to be willing to make a change. You have to be willing to take that next step up. Um, I tell people all the time, I'm an introvert. If you would put me in a room of uh, 50 people, 150 people and say, hey, Steve, we've invited you to this event. Uh, please come and enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to find a table in the back and I'm going to go back. Just like if you look behind me, I'm going to sit yeah. at one of those tables and mind my own business. People won't mm -hmm. know anything, mm -hmm. right? And and so my authentic self in real life is uh, boring, right? Yeah. But I know when I walk in and I'm supposed to be on, I have to engage. Turn on. That's right. Turn and on. so there's a lot of us like that. And so I teach yeah. people, uh, thanks for that question, by the way, Pat, when you want to be more engaging, first of all, are you excited about your topic? Mm -hmm. Is this something you love talking about? You want, when we talk about speaker talks here, it's an event I do every six months. It's like a TEDx, only it's speaker talks. And it, we want you to talk about your topic. We want to talk about the topic that makes you the expert. And we want you to be excited about it. If you're not excited about that topic, that's not your topic, right? We have to find you the topic that will excite you. And so even if it's like, okay, today we're going to be talking about, no, you can't say it that way. You have to say, hey, you know, and it's a voice inflection and it's a change in your personality and it's a movement and it's moving towards the camera and away from the camera. And so all of that stuff happens when you want to be paid to be a great speaker or presenter. If that's what you're after, if you just want to be a great presenter, then you need to take a basic course, which I also offer. But it's a basic course on public speaking. It's still about confidence. It's still about mm -hmm. energy so that when you talk to the PTA, people are still going to listen to you and you will become the authority, if not the expert in whatever you're helping them to accomplish. Right. And that's that's what it's all about, too. So becoming 
engaging, becoming uh, authentic, an authentic self that you create to yourself uh, will change how you present yourself to the people. You brought up a really interesting, really interesting subject here, because when yeah. you were just talking about this, you talked about finding the right topic for you. It's almost like when you go out to find clients or, or customers. There are customers that are sort of wired to be attracted to what you have to offer and to who you are. It's the same thing with your talk. It's the same thing with your subject. If you're, and the way I'm understanding it from hearing you and from what I know is that there are specific topics that we're like almost programmed, although I wouldn't say it's like programmed, but it's like this, that you're sort of programmed that it's the right thing for you. And that when it's not mm -hmm. something that you just happen to come across one day and said, oh, I think that'll be my topic for today. Yeah. Right. It's something right. that is right. It's something that you have a real knowing about that this is something that mm -hmm. uh, that's meant for you to talk about part of your passion and your purpose. You know, that's that's a really good point. Uh, I do opposites when I get speak when I get authors who want to be authors who want to sell more books. A lot of authors don't understand that in order to sell more books, you have to be a great speaker and a great presenter. Right. Uh, then you have speakers, people who want to be speakers, and they have a a message. They boy, I got to share this message, and so you know, it's like, will anybody want to listen to that message? And then of course, it's delivering that message. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I tell people is when you're delivering, you have to take the I the me and the my out of your talk, out of your, mm. you take it out of your book too. I mean, I, that can't be in there. Mm. But so when I present to you, I would take your information, put it into my speaker blender. And when I pour it out, it will still be my talk. It'll still be my story, but it'll be about you using your memories, your emotions, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and your experiences. And it's it, that's a hard concept because most of us are used to talking about ourselves. The elevator talk that we talked about right. is all about this is my company and this is how long it's been in business and nobody cares, right? right? And then this is what I do. And and if you're like a realtor or something, you do exactly what every other realtor says they'll do, but you think it's special because you're saying it. Mm -hmm. And people have heard that. I mean, that's it. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that elevator talk. If you understand that people don't really want to hear about your company or you, then you have to take that elevator talk and turn it around so that you ask them the right questions so yeah. that you can say, if I'm an attorney, anybody in here ever been sued? Anybody in here ever been involved in a traffic accident? Everybody in here ever done this? And a couple people will raise their hand. Now you've got those people's attention. You're not going to get everybody's attention. That's no. not the way the world works. And then you can address what you want to those people and take that one minute and make appointments with those people. And people exactly. are like, oh, really? And yet mm -hmm. then you teach them that for a little while and it's not ingrained in them. And I've been on the, on the Zooms where I just I worked with them for about an hour. Right. And I, I tell them it's a it's a five week course. Right. You got to take this. And they're like, <laughs> I don't know, five weeks to learn how to do an elevator talk. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and I go. So this and after the hour, that first hour, they're like, oh, OK, I got it. I'm like, uh, OK. Right. <laughs> you're supposed to send me this <laughs> other stuff. You're supposed to send me a video or something, but they don't do it because they think they got it. And then they get up in the very next Zoom meeting we have mm -hmm. and they do exactly what they've always done. Right. You know, because it's that's what's ingrained in us. It's creatures of habit. For 20 years. Absolutely. It's absolutely. And so that is one of the challenges when we talk about uh, mm -hmm. being a great presenter, being a great speaker. It's mm -hmm. how can you adapt what you already know? Take your expertise and turn it into something that other people want to learn about. Because mm -hmm. as we just said here, it's it's all about how do you do something so that people say, I want to learn more about that. Right. 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 It's so funny how you're just talking about, um, you know, how people will repeat what they were doing before. I did a talk um, a couple of weeks ago for a chamber of commerce, hysterical. It was about your leadership style and choosing your, having the, your knowing, understanding and knowing your primary leadership style. Because when you lead with that and you are personifying that leadership style, you'll attract more people. So I went through all the whole thing and ingrained with them. I thought that you <laughs> that it's really important that you choose one leadership style. Yes, you get the others, 
no one, no worries. We have all of them within us, but you have one primary leadership style. And at the end, I asked them to all identify what their leadership style was. And there was a handful of people who said, well, I've got like three or four of them. Well, of course yeah, you do. do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Exactly. That's, those are my styles. I have plenty of them to go around. Yeah. Right. You know, that's, but that is, I mean, it is, we all do that, unfortunately. Exactly. And so right. once you recognize that, uh, it is one of those things that you have to say, wait a minute. I mean, I've, like you say, we teach people certain things and they just, they go, oh, I got it. And then they turn around and they don't got it. You know, oh. it's like, oh, yeah. wait, <laughs> you miss that. And so yeah. I, I've done that with the I, me, mys. You know, you watch, you get their first writing of their speech they're going to give. So the first five minute talk, you say, okay, five minutes, write this out. And they write it out and you write them back and you fix all this stuff saying, okay, you got to take out the I, me, my's, you got to do this. You got to change your story here. Mm -hmm. And then they come back with you and they've still got I, me, my, and I go, um, you what part of this did eyes. you not understand? Yeah. <laughs> but it's important. And they go, <laughs> it's important that people yeah. know me. No, it's well, it's no, my, it's but it's my, I had one lady who she took about, uh, uh, three weeks worth of my six month course. And I was teaching her that I mean mine. And she was like, but it's my story. I went, I know, but you're so consumed with it being about you and you can make it about them. Right. And still have it to be your story. But, I, but it is my story. I went, um, okay. Yeah. yeah but a and, fun, honey. <laughs> she was, well, she finally said, you know, I said, look, you know, she, and she did her five minute. I think she did her five minute. And then I sent it to a couple of people and said, tell me what you think. Am I way off? And they went, oh my gosh, no, this is bad. This is this. And so I wrote to her, I said, okay, I, I've submitted this to a couple of people and we all have the same opinion, you know, other speaker trainers and that. So this is what we suggest. And she wrote back and said, I had four of my friends look at it and they think it's just fine. Of course. Uh, like they're said, not speaker trainers. Like you said, exactly. here's, here's the refund. I, I just <laughs> don't need that, you know, yeah. aura in my space go ahead and move it on out but she was mad she was madder than heck at me because you know she was like it's my story you can't take it from me it's like yeah. mm, okay you aren't going to make any money with it we will that's up to you oh, so yeah and one of the so, things for me um i'm sorry pat go go ahead uh this morning i was we were you know like because i'm starting to do these shows and pat and i we've been doing it for a while now originally said we were going to do this you know, three years ago, but now we're doing it. Yay. But we, Pat and I were at a, a speaker thing and one of the trainers was like, gee, Barb, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if you're going to have, if you have what it takes to be a really good, you know, interviewer or speaker. And right? I remember at the time, I remember, remember, yeah, I remember that. I it was like, exactly. I just, and, but I was thinking about it this morning going, well, I just showed him and I can't wait to one day I'm going to say to him, you know, what? and you thought I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, you know, it's what's funny is I have people and I've been on other people's podcasts, you know, yeah. and and some of them are great, but some of them are just like, you know, it's like this. It's like watching a TV interview. It's like yeah. boring. It's like, yeah. no, that's yeah. that's not entertaining. And you and I know that we have to be entertaining on these things. We have right. to get people involved, just like anything else that we're doing. If we right. don't convey the right information in the right manner to entertain right. people to stay with us, right? right? And so when these people say to you, well, that's, you're not going to make it, you know, and mm -hmm. I've had some of the most boring, and I try and spice up their mm -hmm. Their podcast. material and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I go, you know, we could do this. And they're like, no, we don't do it that way. Right. And you're like, Okay. Exactly. Well, oh, well. I, I probably won't broadcast this out because mm -hmm. you're boring. boring. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's amazing how and people will give you advice. I I I yeah. love to give people advice. And it's all I can do to hold back sometimes because it's like, hey, you know, I could help you if you want. I mean, I've looked at people's websites and say, Would you like any advice on your website? And some some of the people will say, Nope. My website's fine. And some of the people yeah. say, yeah. And then you write to them and you say, hey, you could try this and try that and make sure you got this. Like there mm -hmm. are five, five things that you could put right on your website that will get people email. Then that's what you want, right? You want to get mm -hmm. people, if you're, they're going to your website, you want them to click on something. So they give you their information so that you can yeah. stay in touch because they came to your website for a reason. They may not be ready to buy today, but maybe six months from now, they'll be ready to buy. But if you don't stay in touch with them, they forget about you. There's too many right. websites. 
And so you'll say that and people will, will, I've had people write me back after they said, yeah, I'd like some information. And I write to them and they are like, well, you know what? I don't think you know what you're talking about. I go, maybe I don't. Oh, okay. I always go, maybe I don't. You know, I was just trying to be helpful, but it was yeah. free. And you know what they say about free. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly right. yeah, but I mean, I, and, and I have, uh, I offer a 30 minute consultation. I tell people, I just posted it again from a year ago that said, if you want help with your business, especially the COVID businesses that are mm -hmm. so close to absolutely yeah. closing down or never opening again. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you want help with your business, I, I've been in five brick and mortar stores and I've had three online businesses. I have a pretty good idea what works and what doesn't work mm -hmm. and what will not only get you through the COVID, but probably make you a lot more money. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I tell one story that uh, a few years ago, uh, before COVID ever happened, but a few years ago, this guy running a dry cleaner shop was uh, in one of my groups. And he was saying, I, I think I'm going to drop out of the group. Oh, how come? He said, well, uh, I'm not making any money at my cleaner. So I'm going to have to, you know, and I was, we were like, so I sat down with for coffee and I said, hey, so tell me about it. He had, it's a 20 year old dry cleaning business. I went, oh, wow. Well, and you're not making enough money now? He says, well, we, that's why we started delivering, picking up and delivering dry cleaning because we needed to increase. And I went, and that's not helping. He said, well, a little bit. I said, okay, well, let's talk about that, right? We were sitting at coffee and I said, so uh, what's your email list look like? I said, how many customers you have? You know, you should have a database of how many for 20 years. I said, how many email? I said, what's your email list look like? And he went, oh, we don't, we don't ask people for their emails. Oh, okay. I said, well, how do you keep in touch with them? He said, well, we have a phone list. We keep phones. I went, okay. So you have a phone list. Phone list is just as good, if not better than an email list, depending on what you're doing. I said, okay, so how often do you have, do you call them? And they went, well, we, we don't no. call them. We don't want to bother them. <laughs> I went, okay. So you've been in business 20 years. You don't have an email list and you never call any of your clients. Uh, don't you call the ones that haven't come back for a while to say, Hey, and he went, well, no. I said, well, we got to start that right now. I said, yeah. he said, I can't afford it now. He said, it's too late. I can't afford it now. I went, you can certainly afford a high school kid to come in, right, for X number of dollars and make a 50 to 100 phone calls every night. I said, it's worth, you know, I don't know. They'd probably be glad to get 50 bucks for, you know, a, a week's worth of work just making 50 phone calls. And right. they were like, well, I'll give it some thought. Well, see, they weren't open at all to even Not surviving. Right. And of course, right. three months later, he finally sold the business. And when I talked to him the next time, it was really interesting. I saw him the next time and I said, because I went into the store, I didn't know he'd sold it. And I went into the store and I said, hey, how's it going? I said, you're still open. He goes, well, I sold the business. I went, oh, you sold it? He said, yeah, yeah, to some level. I went, okay. I said, but you're still here. He said, well, I made a deal with him. I went, oh, that was a good deal for you. And he didn't make any money on the sale mm -hmm. and he was hired in for minimum wage. Oh, oh, keep doing his business. Oh, oh, and you just oh, went, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Painful. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so that's, you know, a lot of times it's our own yeah. limitations, limitations, right? Absolutely. Isn't that right? When we talk about happiness, it's our own limitations. Um, mm -hmm. I've had people in my life that I go, oh, you got to be reading the right books and listening to the right. Uh, information. You got to putting the positive things in. And I have to admit, I didn't do that. I was 29 years old and uh, I was just going bankrupt out of an ice cream store. I tried for two and a half years. And a guy came into my ice cream store and he was a high school friend, hadn't seen him. And when he came in and got ice cream, we had a conversation. I said, well, where do you live, George? And he goes, three blocks up the street. I went, I've been open two and a half years and you live three blocks up the street and you never came in before. He said, uh, I just didn't. Right. You're like, wow. You know, and then, of course, yeah. I'm sure I was not in a good mood at 29 going bankrupt, you know, because I think I had like a week left to, because I knew it was closing. And he handed me a, a tape. He said, hold on a second. I want to give you something. I said, sure. And he gets in his car and gets in those days. It was a cassette tape and he hands me a cassette tape. And I'm thinking it's, uh, you know, uh, Steely Dan or Santana. I'm like, oh, yeah. And he hands it to me as soon as you look at it, you've got that writing on it. And you're like, oh not one of those. I went, no, you need to take it back, George. You need to take it back. He went, no, you hang on to it. He hang on to it. I went, no, I don't, want, I'm not going to listen to it. I don't listen to that motivational crap. That's not what I do. And he went, okay, do me a favor. I said, sure. He goes, the next time you hang on to it, the next time you run into somebody who needs an attitude adjustment, give that to them, would you? I went, sure, I'll do that for you. 
right? And then we called it a day and went on my way. And it was on my way home that I suddenly had that revelation. Wait a minute. I think he said I needed an attitude <laughs> adjustment. <laughs> right? <laughs> and honest, I put that in the machine to see what he was talking about and started changing my life. And that's what we don't understand. We don't know what we don't know. And right. so every time you need a coach, you need a mentor, you need support, reach out mm -hmm. to one of these ladies and say, hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. And they just right. ask the question. It doesn't cost anything to ask a question. Exactly you right. Say, yeah, you say, hey, I have a question. And if they can't answer it, they'll put you in touch with somebody who probably somebody can. Who can. So, yeah. Steve, how often do you listen to motivational materials? Every day? Oh, Every day. Every yeah. Day. I mean, yeah, I mean, if I'm not, course. if I'm not on something, a webinar or something listening, cause I don't, you know, I listen to a lot of other people's webinars trying to learn and grow, but I've also got uh, audible books, you know, audible mm -hmm. books on my uh, mm -hmm. uh, phone too. And so uh, constantly listening to audible. Matter of fact, I just bought one as a gift for somebody who hadn't heard. Uh, uh, I think it was called the best, best kept secrets for communication or something. And uh, nice. he hadn't he hadn't heard it. So I sent it to him. But it's, you know, every time and now I'm writing a book on communication. Steve, why are you reading or listening to a book about communication? Because you know what? There's lots of stuff I don't know you yet. Know. You pick up stuff, right. you know, and you don't know. Absolutely. Right. Right. And when you don't know what you don't know. Back to that. Go ahead. When, I'm you're, an expert that. In your, when you're an expert in your field, you want to know more and more and more and more. And right. everybody's got a new and different perspective. And just because you're an, ex an expert in your field doesn't mean exactly what you said, that there aren't people out there who are doing things differently than what you're doing. And you can learn from them and you can grow. And this is mm -hmm. what we're here for is to grow. And I tell people all the time, one idea can change your life. It can totally. certainly your change income. your income. Right. Totally. One idea. I, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story. I'll try and shorten it down for you. But I was really young. Who knows how old I was? 20 and 22. And I was working at a restaurant and some guy came up to me and said, Steve, I got a great idea for, you know, I went. Now, I lived in Iowa, you know, hog capitals of the world type stuff. And he said, I got an idea. We're going to make keychains. I went, keychains? He went, yeah, yeah. We're going to make like porky pig keychains. We're going to make keychains. And I was like, he said, all I need from you is a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks. Well, again, keep in mind. That was a thousand bucks in those days was like 10 or $15,000 today. It was a lot of money. And I went, you want a thousand bucks for me to make a keychain?" I said, get out, leave, go away. And he came back like two months later. He goes, Steve, Steve, I got, I made the idea better. And now I know you're going to want in. I went, what is it? He went, hooping pig keychains. I went, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, if you squeeze them, you know, you got, you got rubber cement. So if you squeeze them, rubber cement comes out, right? So. You squeeze it, rubber cement comes out and it goes back in, comes yeah. out, goes back in. Yeah. He went, yeah. That would be hysterical. Well, see, and he went, it's going to be fantastic. All I need is a thousand bucks. I went, no, I'm not giving you a thousand bucks. You've lost your mind, right? Three you or four, it. five years goes by. Well, yeah. You know, three or four, five years goes by. I went to my first trip to Hawaii. If you've been to Hawaii, you know that ABC stores honest, are every half block in Honolulu. You're in Honolulu. Every half block is an ABC store. We you know it's like right. a convenience store. Yeah. And I walked into one of those and sitting right in front of me was a rack of keychains, pooping pigs, pooping sheep, pooping cows, pooping hippopotamus. And I went and I walked to the next ABC store, racks and racks right. of pooping animal keychains. Yeah. He probably became a millionaire. And I thought yeah, it was just a stupid idea because yeah. I was closed down. I was closed down. I tell people all the time I was dry. I would talk college for seven years. I'm dry. I'm supposed to be the beacon for knowledge, teaching kids how to think outside the box, which, of course, doesn't happen in today's colleges. But <laughs> I was supposed to teach people how to think outside the box. That's what college professors are supposed to do. And I'm driving out of the parking lot and I heard a commercial and it said, never go to a bookstore again when you can order all of your books online, amazon.com. And I went, what a stupid idea that is when I can just go up and pick it up right now. Mm -hmm. If I'd have put, right, bought stock mm -hmm. in amazon.com mm -hmm. that year, I'd be a millionaire today just by buying minimal amount of stock in Amazon. Right. Most of us limit ourselves. That's who mm -hmm. we're limited. And that's what you and I all are trying to get people to stop doing. We want okay. you to unlimit yourself, unlimit your thinking. And uh, Pat and Barb can certainly help you do that. I mean, that's what we're all about. 
So, yeah. Steve, was that the reason or the the um, thought process behind speaker talks? Well, I've been teaching people how to be great speakers. Like I said, I've taught college. I've been teaching people how to be great speakers for about 30 years. And what I noticed was a whole bunch of people were trying to get on uh, TEDx and they couldn't get on. And I started to do my research and my homework and I talked to people who had tried 10 or 15 times to get on a TEDx and a couple of people who had gotten on them. And then they told me the limitations and what it went. And then I talked to some of the organizers and they say to get on a TEDx, um, there's only like two slots. People don't understand this. Most of the slots are taken by the, the organizers, pick out their favorite people and fill up the slots. And there's only like two slots. Most of them have to come local. Once in a while, they'll reach outside of that. But that means for every slot that's open, there's 200 people applying right. for a TEDx. So the odds of you right. getting one are slim to none. And yet people are selling you courses oh, on how to, how to apply, right? They're selling you a $500 course on just how to apply. Doesn't mean you're going to get the job. But that's what promoted. I, I talked to my speaker friends who as a speaker, you need a sizzle reel. As an author, you need to be more visible. For people mm -hmm. who have um, a real message, whether you know whether it's stop child abuse or uh, stop pornography or whatever yours right is, when you want that, you have to have a video that really captures you as the expert. Mm -hmm. And most people understand that if you get seen on a stage, a quality stage like TEDx, for whatever reason, people say, oh, they're an expert and they'll hire you to present your topic. So that's what pushed me to really look into that. And three years ago, I started speaker talks to help people get on stage, to be the expert, to convey their message. And of course, for me to help teach them how to be great presenters so that they can actually mm -hmm. connect with the audience that they want to. Because we all know that life and helping other people is what we should be about. Now, mm -hmm. most of us are selfish and try not to do it. I mean, if, I, I, years ago, I did a, a workshop for uh, volunteers and I told the volunteers I hated them, right? Because they put the pressure on me to volunteer. I, who wants that? I don't want to volunteer, right? But somebody does it and I'm really glad it's them and they get their life, you know, blood out of it. The rest of us, we want to help other people in different ways, you know, and mm -hmm. so, whether it's teaching you how to be a great presenter, whether it's teaching you how to get your message out, whether it's teaching you how to be happier, right? All of it comes back to what's your dream? What do you want to do for people? Mm -hmm. How can you change people's lives? That's right. the message that we have to keep, especially in America today. I mean, look at what a disaster. Everybody hates everybody. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. right? And so we have to stop hating and start caring. Uh, I go back to the neighborhood. I grew up in a little town called Carbon Cliff, Illinois. And it would the neighbors would walk in the the folks' house, just walk in. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew each other. It was okay mm -hmm. if they walked in your house. They weren't going to steal from you. Well, today we're afraid of our neighbors, right? right? It's like, what are you looking at? What are you doing here? Hey, you came you got in my yard. Huh? Oh, no. When's the <laughs> last time you laid in your yard anyway? You don't use your yard, right? But right. we've gotten to that place. So we have to figure out how to get back to where we need to go, which is caring about the people next door, caring about mm -hmm. the people that we're coming in contact with, you know, how, how Pat and I connected and how Barbara and I now are connecting and how we need to make those connections and keep them right. The relationships, everybody talks relationship. If you get on LinkedIn, uh, people talk about relationships and yet somebody will send you a thing on LinkedIn that says, Hey, I looked at your profile. I think we have some synergy. Yeah. And would you, allow me to, you know, connect with you. And I go, Hey, be great. Let's talk about how we can make it work for both of us, help us both make more money and help more mm -hmm. people. And then they send me back five paragraphs of buy my stuff. Oh, oh, oh I get that all the time. Oh, anyway. And you're right. And now everybody that I talk to says, Ugh. and yet some people are still doing that. It's, it's like, no, right. let's have a phone call. Right. Let's have a conversation to see if we have any reason to really stay in touch, you know, whether we could put together a workshop, whether we could, right. you know, I tell other speakers, uh, speaker coaches, uh, and I go, so and I've written to lots of them. I say, hey, I think we have some synergy. We should connect. And I've had a couple of them be real rude and real mean. Why? I, right. I don't think so. Right? right. And you're like, whoa. But some of them write back and I go, well, you're a speaking coach. You have. So if you're teaching just 30 students a year, do you want them to get on a stage? And they go, well, that's the goal is to get on stage when I'm done teaching them. I went, 
willing to team up with me. I have a stage. And you know what? Three quarters of them go, no, thanks. Right. I know. You're doing your students a disservice. Now, maybe it's that they really don't have any students. You know, that could be too. That could right. be too. Yeah. yeah. I heard this really crazy statistic that, excuse me, the less than 50% of entrepreneurs make over 100000 a year. And that coaches, coaches, oh my gosh, only 5% make over 100000 a year. And more than 50% of them make under 25000 a year. Yep. So Isn't that phenomenal? It is. And yet, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of resistance from speakers, from coaches, from authors about getting any help whatsoever. And it really surprises me. Do you find that too? Oh, people, people, I, and, and it comes from our upbringing. People don't know how to ask for help. Right. And they think asking for help is a weakness. Right. right. And it also exposes them. You know, so if I have, if I, just like now, if I say I need 10 more speakers for my June event, right? Well, I need 15 speakers for every six months. So if I tell people that, a lot of people go, oh, I can help you with that. And then they disappear. I never hear from them again. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the time when we ask for help, we don't get the responses we're looking for. But most people, like you say, when you say, hey, I can help you with that. They're like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. You don't worry about it. And you're like, yeah, I don't get it. I don't, if somebody said to me, Steve, I can help you for free, uh, right. bring in five new people for your event. Mm -hmm. I go, mm -hmm. oh, we're talking. We're, right. we're talking. You know, like you and I, we've, we've shared, hey, I can almost double, I can double the number of appointments you get from every networking event if you just learn my style for uh, the elevator talk, right? For the, uh, yeah, if you learn my style for that, the opportunity talk, as opposed to an elevator pitch, I can double the number of appointments you get. How much is that worth, right? How many, what's your closing ratio? All that good stuff. And you know what? Almost nobody calls me up. Almost nobody says, boy, if you could double, you know, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. People don't reach out. And it's because I, I always say I was an entrepreneur, too. And people said, I, I have an ice cream store. People, nobody came up to me when I had an ice cream store and said, can I, can I help you build your business? Nobody. Mm -hmm. When I had my banquet hall, nobody came up and said, hey, I can teach you how to make, make a better banquet hall. Nobody. So the fact that nobody ever reaches out to ask if we can help makes right. us suspicious of the people who do. Right. I think right. that might be part of it too. And so you gotta, yeah. you know, have what's a, I, that's why I tell people all the time: reach out to Pat and Barb, and ask the question. It doesn't cost you anything. No. It's free, right? Yep. And it might change your life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's let's stop being afraid of success. Yeah, that's Let's it. Let's just stop being afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and, still, and quit apologizing for success. Yeah, seriously. Quit yeah. You know, apologizing that you're successful. Well, and that's <laughs> that gets back to everything we've done, Barb, since we were yeah. this big. You, was, uh, I remember going, uh, I was working at IBM. You know, you're always in your suit and that kind of stuff. And I would walk up to people at the supermarket or the office depot place. And I'd go, wow, you look really nice today. And they would go, oh, this old thing? <laughs> um, okay. Hey, I really love your hair. Oh, really? I haven't had it done in weeks. I mean, that's what we do. Right. We, we negate ourselves as opposed to saying, wow, thanks. Hey, I haven't, wow. I haven't received a compliment for a while. Yeah. Right? But we do. We, and the same right. thing with everything that we're in. It's people don't know how to accept success and talk about it. But we haven't been taught to talk about money either. Right. Um, when you think back no, to your, even. your parents probably said, we don't talk about money to our children. Right. Uh, that's that's how I was brought talking. up. Yeah. That's how I was that's brought who up. you should be talking about money to, right? right? How do we teach them to make a lot more money? I'll, again, a quick story. Uh, Cabot Roberts was, uh, I was working with him on a stage in, decades ago. And he had a thing that said, when your kid turns 16, don't have him get a job, right, at all. And I was like, no, you know, I'm from John Deere country in Iowa and Illinois. I went, no, you find a job, find the value of money. And he went, because all they're going to learn at that first job, right, is all of the people who are trying to avoid doing the job. Right. He's going to teach them all those ways to look busy, but not be busy. And sure. I was like, oh, interesting. He said, instead, teach him to read a book of your choosing. Have him do a book report. 
right? And so, I mean, I, so my, I let my son hear, you know, that, and he was like, oh, dad, I'd love that. I went, great. All right. So here's what we're going to do. And we did that. And I gave him Acres of Diamonds and The Millionaire Next Door and all those little books that turned into big books. And then he finally read uh, Robert Kiyosaki's uh, Cashflow Quadrant. Yeah. And then he went on to do other things. Yeah. And, but he, by the time he was 18, finishing high school, he was, uh, he'd formed the Future Millionaires Club in high school. Now, I wouldn't even have thought of that. I'm going, what, what? And when he talked to, uh, we set him up on a small monthly uh, program at our stockbroker. And when he sat down to talk to the stockbroker, and I mean, I'm sitting there, right? And I think I'm, I don't probably 50 years old at the time. And he starts talking to the stockbroker. The stockbroker is going to use little toys to, to show people how to invest their money and build on build. And I'm like, oh, this will be interesting. And my son's like, oh, is this like uh, uh, sh uh, shorting a stock? And I went, what? And my stockbroker said, yeah. And he goes, so you're going to teach me about puts and shorts and this and that. And I went, what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> he already by 18 knew more than I knew because I'd put the right books in front of him. And then he started buying the right books saying, can I read this one and do a book report? Because he still didn't want to have a job, which I don't blame him. <laughs> he became when he graduated college. He said, Dad, you told me I could be anything I want to be when I graduate. I went, Absolutely. He said, I want to be a bartender. Now, he'd worked as a bartender for me at my bar. And I went, all, all that money, you want to be a bartender? And he went, yeah. Is it okay? I went, absolutely, it's okay. And, you know, he's 34 years old now. And he travels the world because he's learned to make money on money. He's learned how to manage the money. And he'll take three months uh, out before the COVID ever hit. He and his wife would take three months and just go like to south of south or central america they take three months and go through europe and we're like how are you doing that and it's because he learned how to manage money and money yeah. doesn't control his life he controls money, money. and so that's what, again you talk about what we don't teach our youth what we don't teach each other uh, rule of 72 when it comes if anybody wants to know about the rule of 72 when it comes to money and how to make a lot more money using the rule yeah. of 72 drop me an email steve at steve I'll be glad to spend five minutes with you and teach you that because it will change your life if you don't already know it. Absolutely. Totally change your life. Totally. So um, quick, like if you could give somebody one or two tips to get on a stage, whether it's for being paid or for free to just get exposure, what would you suggest? The first thing you have to do is, of course, we talked about this is you have to decide what topic topics because when you're brand new starting out, you have to cover a wider range of topics. And so they have to be a broader range that will reach more people. Because if you said, I'm only going to talk about money, you know, maybe the Knights of Columbus right. is like, yeah, we don't need you, right, type thing. Right. But if you said, hey, I talk about, you know, these seven things, people go, oh, that'd be good. And, and you have to say, when I'm done, your people will be glad I came. And when you're making your pitch, you have to offer them. So Hey, do you want your organization? Can I help your organization be more effective, uh, have more fun, create more whatever, right? So you have to look at what organization you're applying to and then say, hey, I can do this. And I, I tell people all the time, and don't undercut your value, mm -hmm. right? When you're beginning, I, I, I have a whole thing out there on YouTube. I think it's, we'll speak for food. I spent the first two years of my career. Hey, you're serving dinner. You want me to speak for 20 minutes? I'm there, right? Yeah. Mashed potatoes, green beans, and Salisbury steak. Okay. Hey, let's have it. Let's have a great time. And I spent two years just paying my dues doing that. Now, you don't have to this year, right, these days. You can learn how to shortcut that and how to really jump into some of the big money if that's what you want to do. But you have to have the experience, too. You can't just get out and say, I'm going to speak for $10,000 this month. Right. Uh, if something goes wrong, if something happens, you have to know how to cover yourself. You have to know how to cover what's going on. Or I, I was talking in front of 500 people one time in this auditorium and the power went out. Bam. You're in a black auditorium with only the exit signs lit. Right. And of course, everybody's like, oh, and I went, OK, hold on, hold on. Now, Mike, no microphones. Nothing's working. 500 people. And you just have to project your voice. Tell people, hey, we're here. We're going to finish this. Right. Because you don't want people stamping you to the doors or getting lost. Mm -hmm. So it's like, OK, so all we're going to do is you're going to pretend like you're listening to an audio tape and I'm going to help you finish this workshop. And for 15 minutes until the power came on, 
you just finished your talk. But I know so exactly. many speakers that something goes wrong and they're like, I'm done. Their PowerPoint yeah. quits working. And they're like, well, I, I don't I don't know what I'm going to. You don't have enough experience to be on that stage right. because when they're paying you, you know, you have to come up with the value. And that's uh, the value you bring is something that I, I tell the story a few years ago. I was uh, in California. I lived in California and I was home visiting uh, family and somebody called me up and said, hey, Steve, we want you to speak to the lawyers association, the attorneys association and teach them how to be better presenters so that we can you know, get more effective in front of the judge. I went, oh, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. And they said, well, you know, when would you like to do that? I said, well, we could start that, you know, when, whenever. And they said, how about next month? I said, great, next month. And uh, they said, well, um, you know, how much is that going to cost me? I said, well, I said, do you want this to be three months worth or six months worth of training? They said, oh, no, we want to lunch and learn. <laughs> you want to lunch and learn to teach your attorneys how to be better in front of a judge? <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm, I've never had that, right? So I, I went, well... <laughs> a lunch and learn, but it was going to be back in my home state of California. Right. Yeah. And I went, well, I'll tell you what, that way I don't have to travel. I don't have to do this. I'm just going to, I said, I said to the lady, okay, how about 2,500 bucks? I said, it's my home. I won't have to travel $2,500 that work out. She went, okay, I'll take that back to the bosses. Right now I'm charging $10,000 for a keynote talk. Right. Just so you know, 10,000 bucks is what it gets me to show up. And I said, 2,500 bucks to this. And I didn't hear from him for over a week. So I called the person back and I said, hey, um, if we're going to do this, we should get started, you know, because I got to know. And they went, oh, we've gone with somebody else. I went, can I ask how come? I thought we were pretty solid. She said, well, quite frankly, you were so cheap. We weren't sure how good you could be. Right. And right. I learned again. Charge oh. what your what your oh, value you bring. Oh, How much value would I have brought to twenty attorneys looking to get better at presenting in front of a judge? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was yeah. certainly worth five thousand to ten thousand dollars just to help them for that forty-five minutes, right? So when we're talking about getting on a stage, you have to get on every stage that'll have you talk, make a fool of yourself a few times, crash and burn a few times, learn and grow. And trust me, oh, all of those happen. As quickly as you can get on stage, the faster you can get on 50 to 100 stages, the faster you're going to be making $10,000 per talk. Definitely. What are you most excited about right now? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think uh, speaker talks is always exciting to me because I'm looking for the people with the fire who really have something to share and say and want to get on stage and they're excited about it. Um, the people who uh, buy into my long term, my longer term programs um, are usually excited and have an energy to learn and grow because they want to be professional speakers. But that's a long, longer process and we don't get nearly as excited. So what excites me is what excites my people and uh, speaker talks when you know that you can have somebody on a stage for 15 minutes and they can crash. I had somebody last year just absolutely crash and burn. She was uh, uh, her her topic was. I'll say gray drinking because I've heard that topic several times, but it was how uh, in America we take drinking so lightly and it's such a horrible disease. Right. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, if you turn on any TV show, people are always offering, you know, three fingers of whiskey when they walk into an office. Here's three fingers of whiskey. Sit down. Everybody drinks it. You're like, really? Everybody drinks three fingers of whiskey when they mm. walk in. Yeah. But her topic, because she was a recovering alcoholic, she'd been clear for two years. Right. Worked with her. Got her ready. She shows up down here in Tampa. She was from far away. She flew in, right? And then she comes to the stage and she is gone. She'd fallen off the mm -hmm. wagon the night before because she was so stressed out at having to talk in front of people. Mm -hmm. And so she fell off the wagon. And so we have crash and burns. We have people. And it's we've worked with her since then. She's back on her feet now and she's back on her own program. And that's a blessing to her. But, you know, no matter what, no matter how well you're prepared, sometimes you just crash and burn and it happens, mm -hmm. happens to the best of us. And yep. so all you can do is is uh, uh, be excited yeah. about where you can be. And I hope that excitement brings you to speaker talks, whether you want to listen and watch or whether you want to speak. Mm -hmm. Cool. Fantastic. And do you have a freebie for our get for our, our listeners today? Oh, 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 I do. Well, first of all, if you if you understand that you probably want to talk, if you want to be a speaker then you need to know your speaker superpower, okay? And that's how you're going to construct your talks, how you're going to construct 
what you're going to be giving and offering to the people. And for that speaker superpower, I got a little white paper that I'd love to share with you. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, you got to pull out your cell phones and, or write this down because I want you to text, text the word superpower to 26786. You text the word superpower to 26786. Okay. Or you can write to me, Steve at Steve and I'll send you the superpower white paper. The other thing that I'm absolutely tremendously excited about is if you want to have, do, be, or become more than you are today. We talked about that here and how we want to help you be happier, how we want you to help you change your life. If you want to have, do, be, or become more, <sighs> more than you are today, more for the future in your dreams, then go ahead and type the word more to 66866, more to 66866. So if you're, again, you can write to me on that. You can say, Steve, I see Spado. Hey, I want, uh, I want the uh, uh, have, do, and become more, right? Go ahead and write to me, but you can just, you can get it, right, on your phone by just typing in more to 66866. So I think you'll love what you get, and certainly you're welcome to reach out to me anytime, and we will chat, and uh, I'll help you grow to wherever you want to grow. Cool. And we're going to be putting those numbers in well, there. Thank if you, somebody's Steve, driving or something, here. we'll be putting those in the show notes. So, Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm sorry, Pat, you said? Yes. Uh oh, Pat froze. I was oh. just saying, thank you so much for being here today. This has been tremendously success, uh, tremendously helpful. Uh, and if you do have Great. any questions, please reach out to Steve. Or if you have any questions for Barb or me, please reach out to us. Yes. And yeah. with that, I'm going to close out the show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye, everybody. Stay happy. Happy. Bye. Bye-bye.